Hello wonderful person and welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and today we're taking a look at a pretty cool educational game by the name of Taito Ecology. Now this is a pretty interesting title that is going to basically teach you about biomes, ecology, biology and all of, the, all of this awesome stuff that you get to learn at school but this time through a video game. Welcome and enjoy the video! <laughs> Now, right off the bat, this is actually a port from an iPad. And so here you might notice that the graphics are not particularly super awesome, but this also means that it can actually play pretty well even on a slower computer. So I'm gonna show you what uh, this game is, first of all, by starting a new biome and just giving you an idea of what to expect when, when you purchase this game. So there's three biomes to choose from, and this is just um, uh, the beginning of the game where you basically get to choose between grasslands, rainforest, or desert. I think usually desert is a record we're going to turn the tutorial off because I'm going to just kind of explain it to you and the cool thing about this game is that basically it kind of teaches you a little bit about how um, the different things interact in the world and specifically here we're talking about biological things so let's just name this um, just call it dry lands or something I don't know I have no creativity at the moment so we're gonna just go with some simple now, so in this game, you play as this little robot thingy with two sensors in front, and your job is to create these simulated biomes inside of this, I guess, a laboratory or something. It looks like a lab. And uh, you can do this by pressing this button right here, and you have three choices. You can either create animals, you can create plants, or you can create uh, what's called... Uh, decomposers. Now this is essentially how all of the biomes in the real world uh, work as well and all three are important for you to have a sort of a sustainable environment. So we're gonna start with, let's just create something completely ridiculous. We're gonna create uh, a bunch of these plants called uh, joint fur. Uh, we're going to just place them all over the place um, and then just for fun we're going to place a bunch of animals. So this is our plant plant life here, and let's let's place a bunch of actually let's place a bunch of rabbits. Hey, look at that! I got the green thumb because I placed something in the desert. You get awards in this game as well. So we're gonna place a bunch of jack rabbits, and we're going to destroy this environment by basically overpopulating it with rabbits. And this is one of the cool things you can do in this game is that basically you get to experiment with what happens in a certain ec ecosystem if something goes out of control. So you can either place, you know, a lot of um, herbivores that will basically destroy all of the plants, or you can try to place a bunch of um, carnivores, like bobcats right here. We can actually unlock them because we have a lot of coins already. Let's unlock the bobcats. Um, and basically have bobcats eat all of the jackrabbits and then essentially die out of hunger, which is something that's absolutely possible to achieve in this game, and it doesn't take very long. Now, one cool thing about this uh, this game and this title is that it actually plays in the background as well, but without really wasting your computer power. So, if I were to actually exit this, if I were to um, basically get out of this into my regular menu right here, um, I can return to this a few days later, and it will actually have advanced a little bit. So, I have this other rainforest biome called Antin, Anton, Antonimonia, I can't even pronounce it for some reason. And this is a biome that um, has already, uh, I've actually visited it recently, but uh, two days have passed since I, since my last visit. If I enter it, um, you'll notice that I have a bunch of stuff going on here already, um, where I've already earned a little bit of um, income because I've been away for a little bit, and this is due to animal diversity and plant diversity. And you'll notice that uh, this biome is a lot more complex than my desert biome, so there's a lot of things going on I have I have moths flying around. These are actually pollinators, which is why I have so many plants here. I've only started with like a couple of plants, but these moths helped pollinate these um, Heliconia plants, which um, after they started pollinating, they started flowering and created more plants. So there's a lot of the really cool things, a lot of really cool topics going on, which of course, um, if you're a biology teacher, this is essentially how you would want to teach your kids about all of this stuff. And if you're a student of biology, you may want to play around with this just so you can learn about all of these various topics. Um, I also have carnivores taking care of business, so these are my ocelots, um, and I think they're not hungry, but what are they eating? Because I don't see anything that they're eating. I think they ate everything, actually. Uh, you can usually check if you uh, have animals that have died out, and look at that. I used to have armadillos, they're all dead. They all died of starvation. I used to have frogs, they all died as well. I used to have um, agoutis, 
also died. So all of my herbivores are essentially dead. And I think it's because all of my ocelots ate them. I'm fairly certain that that's exactly what happened. Um, I also have ants here. These are, I think I forgot what they actually do. But I think ants are used for scavenging. Okay, I'm not sure what this exactly is. But I guess they scavenge for stuff and they eat leftovers. Now, um, you also need uh, these guys. And these are, um, they're called decomposers. Because they basically, would, oh, I don't need more ants. Uh, what these do, uh, they essentially... Um, destroy dead matter. So if suddenly there's a bunch of dead animals everywhere, my environment is going to start getting polluted and toxic and so on and so forth. And so these guys like earthworms and millipedes and mushrooms, they decompose this stuff and create nutrients. And they're very, very important, which is why my biome, as you can see, is actually 100% health. But um, if you were to place too much of something, like if I were to actually just leave this on for a few days or possibly a few months, uh, if I were to come back, I would notice that, well, first of all, all of my ocelots are going to die of hunger. That's step number one. Step number two is that a lot of the other things will start getting out of control, like plants will actually start... Uh, getting ridiculously overpowered here. There's going to be plants everywhere and then possibly take over the world. And because I don't have enough um, decomposers, this environment might actually get out of control and possibly just kill everything. Uh, I would actually like to see what happens one day if I just abandon this and come back to it after a few months. But I do have these turtles walking around and they seem to be cool. Um, I, wonder if, I wonder if my ocelots can actually eat them. Maybe that's what they've been eating. I think they've been eating my... Oh, I also have some uh, uh, Cotimundi here. I didn't even... I don't even remember placing them here. But yeah, this game has a lot of different animals. Um, a lot of them are basically sort of like the unlocks that you get through acquiring these points. And all of this is, of course, um, like once you purchase the game, it's actually free. You just get these through different achievements. Uh, a lot of it comes in as a kind of um, payment. Um every week payment or in-game week payments for basically just having animals and having various life in here. So you'll get these like coins that you can then use to unlock new um, new things. Like for example, I can now unlock, uh, I can unlock what's, ooh, orchids. Let's get that. That sounds awesome. And then I can build them right here. Okay, that is not as exciting as I thought it would be. That doesn't look like anything like an orchid. So that's possibly one one of the main, concern, main concerns I have for this game is that because it's a it's an iPad port, it's not particularly that exciting graphically. Uh, but you know what? This is a really cool idea. I think this is a pretty awesome idea and uh, definitely something that I would recommend to any biology teacher that wants to explore this in a, in a classroom with their kids, with their students, because it's it's a very it's a relatively cheap game. It's only about six dollars. Um, but so, yeah, once you basically, you know, build up your zone here, um, your actual biome, you can kind of zoom out here. Uh, actually, no, that's not how you do it. The way you do it is as follows. You go to, it's this button right here. Yeah, there you go. You go to here uh, and you can now unlock a new zone. I can basically spend some coins to unlock zone number two and increase the size of my area so I can basically plant more things, build up more animals, and so on. And um, it kind of tells me what's going on here. So you can kind of see there's, you know, health is, seems to be okay for zone number one. Where's zone number one? Here we go. Zone number one. Health is okay. Uh, there's no detritus. So meaning that uh, all of my decomposers, like mushrooms that you see right here, are doing well. They're basically decomposing everything. Um, these moths are supposed to be pollinating, but I think they're not doing a, a very good job at it. So I'm going to place more plants just so that they can actually start pollinating more. And I think I'm going to unlock papayas as well because they sound awesome. Let's put some papayas here. It's a tree actually. And we're going to place more of these um, helis hel heliconias because they actually spread really fast. We're going to place one here. And so basically that's how the plants work. You kind of place them and they, they will spread if you have pollinators or any other insects that help them reproduce. Um, you also have herbivores, which will obviously eat the plants. And then because um, you can sort of have all your plants destroyed by herbivores, you'll want to place some carnivores like... For example, where's my biggest carnivore? Jaguar, there you go. You can place a jaguar, you can place a capybara, which is a herbivore, of course. And we also have cougars in this uh, in this biome as well. Um, each of the biomes has different types of carnivores. So uh, this is, I think, the smallest one that I have here. This is an ocelot. Um, and depending on the biome that you decide to um, open up or unlock as your first biome, you will have different unlocks that you can sort of uh, pursue.
And if this wasn't enough for you, there's of course more. So you can actually go into this as well. And this is essentially the so-called biodex, the index of everything that you're creating and that you um, that you have or can unlock. Uh, so here, um, for each of the animals, for each of the plants, you have their interactions. They ha you have the explanation for their life cycle, what kind of temperature they prefer, um, what they eat, what they what they like to interact with, and so on and so forth. So for example, you can kind of see that for um, this guy Badger right here, um, you can read about diet, so they are omnivore, they eat everything. Um, predators, only a few predators are willing to take on a full grown badger, but their babies are vulnerable to predators, so their babies might actually die. And then lastly, here's another educational piece. If a person is repeatedly being relentlessly bothered by someone, we say that they are being badgered. So there's a bit of a teaching moment here that basically uh, talks a little bit more about how we use the word badger in English as well. So there's a lot of really awesome tidbits here. And this is something that I would actually love to explore um, with my class one day, just, just for fun, just so they can actually learn a, a few things about not just biology, but how a lot of different terms I used in our language as well. And by itself, uh, if you actually ever use this in class or just, you know, playing by yourself, this is great for projects, this is great for any kind of classwork um, and just exploring a lot of different themes and a lot of biological ideas as well. But I think I personally would just love to kind of give this to a person and just have them explore this and then maybe like write a report on what they've discovered and what they found out. Hey, where are you going? My ocelot is escaping into a different zone. I think it possibly got hungry and stuff. Um, also, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, this is just something I noticed now. There's also um, uh, different traits for animals and actually I hope they include more traits because this is kind of fun. But uh, certain animals will get things like and this is actually under glossary here. It's like, for example, albinism, when a, an animal actually becomes white and loses its um, uh, melanin and loses its color. There's also a lot of these other bio biological terms and ecological terms that are right here, and you can kind of explore them and learn more about them because they're all kind of really well defined and they, they all include pictures and they're all applied to this game as well. And on top of this, uh, the developers of this game actually have even included the pre-made... Uh, lesson plans that m teachers can kind of use in their class and some of them I believe are will be available through a link that um, I think might be available when this game actually hits the market. I'm, I'm sort of previewing this game before it uh, before it's opened up on Steam but uh, from what I understand uh, there will be links available to teachers if they actually want to use this in class that have like actual lesson plans already developed for them. So all in all this is actually a pretty awesome title. I think for a biology teacher this is a must-have. Probably one of the few titles that um, I've played that includes so much material already and hopefully this will develop even further into something a little bit uh, more complex where you have trade interactions, where you can actually kind of breed animals. You know, I would love to take this Kotamundi, for example, and maybe breed it with another Kotamundi and make it bigger, stronger and more awesome and with a longer tail, because that would be absolutely amazing. This is something that I remember playing or, or being able to do in one of the Minecraft mods. There was a trait mod that allowed you to breed different animals to make them different. And so if this actually um, becomes what part of this game I would actually recommend this even more because this would be an amazing biology title but even even right now even uh, for you know what this game currently has just the fact that it's kind of cheap and it's available on iPad and um, now will be available on Steam as well I think uh, title ecology is a pretty cool title for anyone who loves biology and wants to learn more about this pretty interesting topic Anyway, so that's all I wanted to say about this game, and thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little review, and hopefully you'll give this game a try. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye And I'm gonna go back into my desert and see if I can possibly create some kind of a super cool biome. And look at how many rabbits I have. Holy cow! I've only been gone for like a few minutes and there's a rabbit paradise invasion here. They're gonna be dying soon, aren't they? Because they're gonna eat all of these plants. And this rabbit paradise is going to one day become a rabbit apocalypse. There's going to be just rabbit skeletons everywhere. Can't wait until this happens. They're sleeping now, but they're about to go hungry. Oh my lord, there's rabbits everywhere. There's no food left. I think the rabbit apocalypse is about to start. I wonder if they're going to resort to cannibalism. That would be absolutely awesome. And come and witness the face of the dying world. Nothing but dead rabbits everywhere. Look at that. We can actually even take a picture of this. This is what it looks like 
when the world reaches the point where there's basically an overpopulation and everyone starts starving and essentially dying. Our biome is at 22% now and is about to reach the end. This is going to be the end of this world because I think we just killed it. We've put too many rabbits that ate everything. Does this remind you of something? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, so that's the game in a nutshell. Buy it if you like it. Thank you. Bye-bye.